You're watching Power Nation. You know, we hear it all the time. Why don't you leave that big shop and build an engine like we do at home? Challenge accepted. Today on Engine Power, it's gonna get hot. Woo. And it's definitely gonna get dirty. Hey everyone, welcome to Engine Power. If you've watched our show before, you've seen us do some cool builds in a very well-equipped shop. I mean, we have things like air conditioning, power tools, and even engine building equipment. But you can see by my lack of pocket arsenal, we are doing something a little bit different today. And we're gonna build an engine in the great outdoors with common hand tools. The great outdoors is actually our parking lot. And we're gonna show you that you can build an engine correctly no matter where you build it. And there's the engine right there in Frankie's sweet truck. Clean one owner. That's why I like to see an engine on a tire with a tote full of junky parts beside it. It's going to be fun. We chose one of the most popular plentiful and easy on the wallet engines there is. A Chevrolet 350 TBI small block. It was someone's unfinished project that we picked up partially disassembled with a few new parts thrown in for good measure. Total cost, 500 bones. Once we got it on the engine stand, we wanted to see exactly what our money had gotten us. This is a flat tab. Yeah, which... up until about 95, they still, in the trucks for some reason, I don't know if they just had old stock or what, but they kept using flat tappets. But yeah. we actually have a cam kit basically with this engine. Well, I bought a cam kit and we got an engine for free. So that, that's what's, we can that, go ahead that's and what's, do that. That's what's cool about this is because the actual parts that the dude is going to put in it are more expensive than the actual yeah. <laughs> engine. But so, uh, they'll work for us. So yeah, I mean, this thing's, I mean, it's got a little bit of. You know, sh schmutz in it, but I supposedly it ran, so well, I don't think it's going to be too bad. But only we want to find out. This is one where we're going to freshen it. We're not doing any crazy performance build. We're yeah. not out here putting a set of aluminum heads on it or, or, or a tunnel ram. Yeah. Um, this is something that, in this state, not bad. We are going to get it apart, see what it needs. Hopefully, it doesn't need much. Mm -hmm. it does have a starter on it. So what I propose is once we get it all done, we've never actually done this before. We should fire it right here. As I'm pulling the stock out where the oil pressure sensor was, it just actually snapped clean off and snapped off flush in the block. So I went to put a, an easy out in it to back it out, and then the easy out snapped off in it. So I've had to trough around it, and now I've got it moving. This was just really brittle and just busted right off. Whoa, look at that. A couple of the uh, oil shrouders are broken. I actually saw that, one of those on the other head, but there's a couple in this head that are broken. I have never seen that before. All the rockers look good. Nope. It's very tempting to just zip it apart, but since we're gonna reuse a bunch of stuff on this, now is the time to catch it. Yeah. If something's goofed up. If they come out good, that's the big thing, and, and none of them are wasted. Yeah, on the bottoms. Yep. All right. All right, ready? You good? Pop it. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Pop uh, it. You gotta hold it. Yep. Well, hold on. I'm stuck. How'd you get stuck? You 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 reefed it out of there. I didn't do it. Okay, this side looks just like the other side. Oh, I mean, just some water and some ah, oil there's, there's, there's... and some oil water. I don't see any chunks though. So far, our build out in the wilderness is going pretty well. Now, we've partnered with AutoZone on this setup to not only get the parts that we need to get it back together, but to utilize their free Lona Tool service. If you're building something at your house and you don't have it, say, a harmonic damper puller or maybe a piston ring compressor, you can go to your local AutoZone and get one for free and use it and then return it to them. We're going to get our dampener off with this setup. This tool is a little pricey to justify owning it if you're not using it on a regular basis. This is why AutoZone offers many specialty tools in their Loan a Tool service. Having the right tool makes it faster and easier to get the job done right. 
even with limited tools, you can still build an engine the right way. We'll show you how. We're mixing it up today, leaving our well-equipped, air-conditioned shop to build a complete small block Chevy with common hand tools, much like you or we would do at home. This is the right way, but you know, it works this way too, because on this thing, it's not gonna matter. Oh, yeah. That's very sassy of you. Jumped off there. Oh, yeah. Man, a little bit of... That's not bit, too bad. That's, that's not total milkshake. It's kind of dirty. Yeah. No matter how well you plan your project, it seems like there's always one or two things you need to pick up after you get started. AutoZone makes it easy with the AutoZone mobile app. You can even order online for same-day store pickup, and their rewards program earns you a $20 reward after you've made five purchases of $20 or more. Nasty. Oh, this is a horrible job. That's what cardboard's for. Yep. Before removing all of the rod and piston assemblies, we'll number the rods and caps to make sure they go back in the right spot. We don't have our dedicated number stamps with us, but a sharp punch does the job just fine. People are walking by, wondering what we're doing, so I'm just waving randomly. <laughs> it's our neighbors. No, no, we didn't get kicked out. I wanna know who comes up with these harebrained ideas to do stuff outside in the middle of... Huh, I know who. The, it the, was you. Of, I mean, I don't think the humidity is actually 100%. I think the humidity was worse this morning. I feel like some of it burned oh, off. Oh no, it's way better now. You know? It's like almost winter time. There we go. Oh. Not as bad as I thought they were gonna be. Not too bad. A little debris yeah. went through her. I, I thought it was gonna be worse, so I think the real question is gonna be, are they standard or are they undersized? Well, that's a 10 under. A quick tip. Use rubber hose on each rod bolt to stop them from scratching the crank journal. Let me give you a little. Let me give you a little. We're going past a little. There you we're go. We're going past yeah. a, little, a little bit of carbon built up. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, I mean, that's pretty standard stuff. Do the stuff. rings move? Yeah, they still move, which is good. That's a good sign. The important part is the skirt. Mm -hmm. The skirt is not gouged up. Not broken off. Not broken off and doesn't look collapsed. Gravy. That's nice. Oh, that's not even that bad. The stock flat tappet looks to be in decent shape, but we won't be reusing it. These are aftermarket caps on this. You notice that? Yeah, and I'm assuming that's maybe like when it was a reman and the core came in, they didn't actually have any caps for it, so. Very possible. Just like the rod bearings, the main bearings are also 10 thousandths undersize, and are in about the same condition. Now, the long, arduous process of cleaning our parts by hand begins, starting with these crusty valve covers. While Frankie gets filthy, I'll recondition the cylinder finish with a 320 grit ball hone. This establishes a new finish for the fresh piston rings to seat on. Using engine oil as a lubricant, the ball hone is turned at approximately 300 RPM, moving in and out of the cylinder to achieve roughly a 45 degree included angle on the crosshatch. To final clean the block, we'll start off with foaming degreaser and copious amounts of scrubbing. We'll finish with stiff bristle nylon brushes and watery dish soap. By hand, it took over an hour to get all the sludge out of this block. A good old fashioned garden hose helps clear the passages and rinse off the soap. Engines can flash rust quickly, especially in humid conditions. We'll use compressed air to get our block dried off in a snap. After all the hours we spent scraping and scrubbing this engine, ready? Yep. we hope it starts.
We did what we could to clean the cylinder heads, scraping carbon deposits off the valves, then lapping the valves to the seats with some fine lapping compound. The heads get a heavy coat of degreaser and some scraping and scrubbing. A cheap wire wheel on the end of our drill makes cleaning the exterior faster and a little bit easier. When cleaning off parts, you have to be very careful to not let the metal rust. Now, an easy way to do this is use a good water displacer or petroleum lubricant and blow it off with compressed air. Now, to do that in the parking lot, we're going to be using this Predator inverter generator and this McGraw 8-gallon portable air compressor that we got from Harbor Freight. This generator can support up to 3,500 watts running, and it has some really cool features like 420-volt, 20-amp GFCI outlets, one 30-amp 120-volt outlet, and even a DC 5-volt outlet for charging mobile devices. It also has a 3.2-gallon gas tank, and with a load-sensing throttle, it can run for hours on end. Our air compressor is great because it's light and easy to roll around on its wheels, and with 150 PSI max pressure and 4 CFM of output, it's great for running things like blowguns and small air tools. All we got to do now is we'll get this fired up, get this baby running, and finish up our heads. Since we're reusing the pistons, they need a thorough cleaning to remove the built-up carbon. A scuff pad, some degreaser, and a lot of patience is all it takes. To remove the carbon from the ring lands, we gently run one of the old piston rings in the ring groove. It's important to take it easy or you can accidentally remove aluminum from the piston. The heads receive a fresh set of valve seals and new valve springs which are set up for our hydraulic roller cam. No fancy pneumatic tools here, we're using a manual spring compressor. Woo. I don't know if you can hear me over the cicadas, but we have finally have all of our parts clean and the engine is ready to get assembled. Like I mentioned before, we partnered with AutoZone on all the parts to get our project back together. And what's great about AutoZone is a couple different things. One, there's probably one close to where you live because they're all over the United States. And two, they have same day store pickup when you call in and order stuff. And if they don't have it, they can usually get it for you right away. First on the list is to get our crankshaft in and measured up. Now, you usually see us measure it with precision gauging, but uh, we have some precision gauging of a different kind. This is plastic gauge, also offered at AutoZone. It's a great way to check clearances on your mains and rods without anything like a dial bore gauge. So uh, let's get her going. We want a true oil clearance, so if you lube the bottom, you're actually putting an oil film underneath the crank, and it will give you an actual true reading on the plastic gauge. So we'll lay the crank in dry, put our plastic gauge in, torque it to spec, measure our plastic gauge, and if everything's a go, then the crank gets lubed up, and then it goes in for real. Now, as long as you don't turn anything, it won't mark up the bearings, and everything will still look good. Now that the plastic gauge is compressed from torquing, you can compare the new width of that little green piece to our gauging. Looks like we are right at two thousandths clearance. I'll take that. That's good. The old crankshaft was in poor condition, so we picked up an engine rebuilder crankshaft kit. It came as a set with the correct rod and main bearings. The mains get torqued to 65 pound-feet. Has three thousandths. So you don't have to put a gauge on it because I, I can just feel that. One of the nicest parts that came with the engine was a hydraulic roller cam kit from Comp. The grind on it was probably designed for a higher performance engine, but since we have it, we're going to use it. Nice. Look at that. If you can turn it with your hand like that, mm -hmm. golden. The kit also came with a new double roller timing chain. 
Now it's time to check gap on our rings. Now these are a pre-gap set. These are a replacement ring for our size piston, but that doesn't mean that you should not check it for minimum end gap. And what we're gonna do is stick these in the bores and then square them up. We don't have a ring squaring tool out here. We're gonna show you how to square them up. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take them, put them sideways in the bore. Then we're gonna take a piston that already has the oil ring installed. Just like a piston ring squaring tool, we're gonna to stick the piston in with the crown down and it's gonna square the ring up. We have 18 thousandths and that's more than enough. What you want is a minimum amount of gap. You can have more, but you have to have a minimum in case the thing gets hot. We don't wanna butt the rings and cause damage to the piston or the cylinder, so we are good to go. On thicker rings such as these, it's a great idea to use a ring expander to install them. You can get one for under $10 at AutoZone. One compromise we will not make, installing a cam without degreeing it. Even without expensive tools, you can degree a cam. This degree wheel runs about 20 bucks and is well worth having. A magnetic based dial indicator can handle the rest. This cam comes in at 106 degrees of intake center line, which is four degrees advanced. Nice. As the sun fades away, all we want to hear is this small block run. Will it? As the sun creeps closer to the horizon, the 350 small block Chevy nears its completion. Once the double roller timing setup is installed, we can move on to the oiling system. Around an open engine, this means you have to be careful not to drop anything into the block. These have compression stops, so go right down to the stop. These lifters are part of our cam kit. They are tie bar hydraulic rollers, which may seem like overkill for this engine. Once again, since we have them, we're gonna use them. We got a complete Victor Rhines head gasket kit from AutoZone, which contains everything you need for the top end. I wish that crew would come to do our work that normally does it. The ninjas? All the ninjas. The midnight ninjas? Yeah. You know, the 10 to 20 people that do all the work for us while we're sitting around drinking smoothies and reading magazines. I haven't had one mimosa today. Can you believe that? I have to, <laughs> I have to talk to somebody about that. The heads get torqued in three stages to a final value of 65 pound-feet. Just because you're building an engine outside doesn't mean it can't look good. We're going with a classic GM Blue. How's it going back here? I'm almost done. I'm gonna have to go get another piece. The stock valve train goes back in, but this time we're using the shorter push rods that came with the cam kit. Before the intake drops on, we'll fill the engine with STP 5W30 synthetic oil we ordered from AutoZone. Weather strip adhesive holds down the intake manifold gaskets. A tall but gorgeous bead of black RTV on the china rails will seal the intake. See, I don't need the gun. I can just do it. In place of the original TBI intake, we'll use an old school Wyand Street Warrior. I get it. The harmonic balancer installer we borrowed from AutoZone's Lona tool service is used again to crank down the balancer. Close, ready? Yep, hit it. Before we test fire the engine, we'll prime it to circulate the oil. With the valve cover still off, it's easy to make sure the valve train is getting proper lubrication and has adequate oil pressure. Looking good. We knew we'd be working late into the night, so we got a Braun dual head LED work light from Harbor Freight. It puts out 4,500 lumens, plenty for seeing what we're doing. For ease of getting the engine running, Pertronics ignition bundle works perfectly. Their ready to run distributor only requires two wires and an ignition coil to light this small block. A Street Demon 650 provides the fuel. We've used this particular one lots of times and it's rock solid reliable. All right, here we go. There you go. Solid. You like those? Borrowed those from the guys down in Carcass. <laughs> I knew we'd get a use out of them one day. 
With our MacGyvered electrical and fuel delivery setup in place, we're ready to see if this thing runs. All right, fuel. And starter. Oh yeah, it's gonna run. Go. All right, ready? Yep. Did you shut it off? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a win right Dang. there. Dang. That's pretty cool. High five. <laughs> that might be probably one of the crazier things I've done. What did you miss most about being in a shop, though? Probably the nice cleaning equipment, because, I mean, pretty much what I have to do at home is what we did here. We're just cleaning stuff in the driveway or in the parking lot and, you know, hand scrubbing everything. I think that ate up a lot of time on this one, but... This went together as clean and checked as well with, with stuff that we had as anything that was ever built inside so uh, oh yeah it got the same amount of attention as any other engine we built right. so i think checked, that's key check bearing clearance yep. it was clean the block was clean I spent two hours cleaning the block yeah. which would normally take 45 minutes in jet washer <laughs> we'd like to thank AutoZone for helping us get this thing together they were a great partner on this build now i think it is time i don't even know what time it is it's time for food is it, what it is it's time for food <laughs> I, all i know is it's dark i'm hungry i'm almost slightly sweaty but uh we have a running engine yep. done in the parking lot so heck yeah that's a win Let's go. For more information, anything you've seen on today's show, go to PowerNationTV.com.